I've been to Dallas, I've been to Chicago twice, but now I don't need to go anywhere because 5G is finally in New York City. But the caveat is that you have to be on T-Mobile's network and have a Galaxy S10 5G, which costs a whopping $1,300. Nevertheless, let's check out what those speeds are really like. But first, a primer on 5G. Now, there are a couple of different variants being utilized. There is high band, which is what's known as millimeter wave as well. And that's used by Verizon, AT&T, and now T-Mobile. Benefit is you're getting super fast speeds, but the downside is the range is super short, like think a block and a half, but also it can't work indoors. Building penetration is really poor. Then there's mid band, and that's what Sprint is using. You're getting similarly faster speeds, maybe not as fast, but the range is slightly bigger. And then there's low band, which basically will give you much wider range, similar to 4G LTE and fast speeds, but again, not as fast as mid band or millimeter wave or high band. Today, we're gonna see millimeter wave in action on T-Mobile's network. But again, remember that with millimeter wave, that's not really T-Mobile's game plan for its 5G network. Ultimately, it really wants to focus on low band, which is that 600 megahertz frequency. And it wants to push that out as far as it can across the country so that more people have access to faster speeds than 4G LTE. The Galaxy S10 5G is available from T-Mobile now. You should note that the phone is not interoperable. So if you buy a Sprint Galaxy S10 5G and you switch networks, it's not going to work between those two networks. You're going to have to switch to T-Mobile's version of the Galaxy S10 5G, and the same applies with Verizon's version. The Galaxy S10 5G has a kickback measure in place to push you from 5G to 4G LTE if the phone gets too hot. That's especially true on days like this where it's 90 degrees in New York City. On another note, the 4G and 5G symbol at the top in the status bar will flicker back and forth. That's because the phone needs to know that there's a data request going on, and that's when it'll show the 5G logo if you're in a 5G area. When your phone's just sitting idly and you're in a 5G area, it's gonna show you that 4G LTE symbol. Just remember that when you're you know, pulling up Google Play games or, or accessing data in any way, then it'll show that 5G logo. So the phone in my right side is the Galaxy S10 Plus. The phone on my left is the Galaxy S10 5G. You can see the 5G logo at the top over here and 4G LTE on the right. Uh, now, we're not going to run the speed test at the same time because that can interfere and slow down speeds. So we're going to run the S10 5G first, and they're connected to the same server. Uh, so let's go ahead. This is the Ookla speed test app that we're using, and we've been using it across all the other sites uh, when we were testing Verizon in Chicago as well uh, as in Dallas when we were testing Sprint. Uh, and of course, it's also going to vary a lot from what I've seen with connecting to 5G networks. So this was actually not that good at all, 134. Uh, but in this exact same spot a couple minutes ago, I hit 411 megabits per second. So really it tends to be very inconsistent, but uh, that's something that's a theme with millimeter wave 5G. A uh, quick word on upload speeds, you're not gonna really see much of a difference there at the moment because uh, none of the carriers have really flicked on uh, 5G upload speeds at the moment. You're still, they're still utilizing 4G LTE upload speeds. And we went ahead and started the Galaxy S10 Plus's test. And you can see it's basically the same. Uh, so really it, it seems like the, it wasn't really using 5G speeds here on the S10 5G. But let's give that another go uh, at the end of this one right here. And we'll see if there's a difference uh, in these 5G speeds on the S10 5G. Okay, there we go. Wow, we're blowing past. That's actually the fastest I've seen it work. So that is really impressive. We're getting over 500 and, well, keep going higher. All right, 500 and, 581 megabits per second. That is definitely the fastest I've seen today. Again, not as fast as the speeds I've seen in Chicago for Verizon. I actually hit more than a gigabit speeds in Chicago, but uh, it definitely was usually over 500 megabits per second on Verizon's millimeter wave network. But this is really impressive that we got 582. And again, let's just do the LTE one for the sake of comparison. Uh, we shouldn't really go higher than 200 megabits per second, but uh, really that's a big difference and that means uh, a pretty big deal when you're downloading large file sizes. Yep, so 146 megabits per second on the LTE one. And so again, that's a good indicator of the different speeds. But again, keep in mind that as we saw before, speeds can be very inconsistent and it could 
already you can see that it dropped down to 4G LTE, uh, likely because we're either not requesting much data or because the phone is getting a little warm uh, because the screen is being on for so long uh, that it's getting warm and taking us back to 4G LTE. So we're about a block and a half away from the 5G node, and this is also just about where the 5G will go as far. Uh, a couple more steps that way, and it'll drop back to 4G LTE. It's actually kind of flickering back and forth right now uh, while I'm here. But while I was here just moments ago, I did try to do a, a speed test right here, and I got 404 megabits per second. So, you know, as far as you can go to the edge, you can still pretty get pretty good uh, speeds. It's just that there's a huge drop off that happens as soon as you cross the range of that area. So only a block and a half, and of course, uh, that's just with millimeter wave. With those other types of spectrum, mid-band, low-band, you're gonna get much wider range, unlike millimeter wave. All right, so I am connected to 5G. I'm connected to 5G. The block, the node is right there on the other side of that block. Connected, connected, going around the corner, going around the corner. And, yep, I have lost 5G. And I'm back on 4G LTE. And this is a good example of what I was talking about with millimeter wave and the poor penetration between buildings. As soon as you go around a block, you're gonna lose 5G and go back to 4G LTE. Same is true if you go inside a building, a restaurant, for example, even if you're very close to the 5G node, you're gonna drop back to 4G LTE because just a flaw of millimeter wave. It just can't go through buildings that well. So we're at another node, which is right over there on top of that building. And I did another speed test and I was able to get up to 415 megabits per second, which is pretty great. And I did an LTE test and that only got up to 153 megabits per second. So definitely a speed parity there. But I did another test on the S10 5G and it only hit 200 megabits per second. So going back to that inconsistency with the speeds, but at least we know it is capable of going uh, past 400 uh, several times at different spaces. So just for comparison's sake, this is an iPhone XR and I'm on the AT&T network, so you can see 5GE at the top right. Uh, and again, 5GE is not really 5G. It's, it's largely a marketing gimmick. It's an advanced version of 4G LTE, so you are getting faster speeds when you're connected to 5GE over regular 4G LTE. However, uh, it's not true 5G. Those devices are not available yet, and you need to buy completely new devices to access true 5G. So uh, only on older phones you'll be able to get 5GE, but you'll need to upgrade your phone to get a 5G, true 5G connection. And as you can see, 115 megabits per second, you know, we already saw that on the LTE S10, uh, which on T-Mobile was hitting around 153 near here. So, you know, pretty unremarkable for 5GE, I suppose, but definitely uh, fast enough to get you by. All right, time for some download tests. Let's start with the Galaxy S10 Plus on the LTE network. Now, this is downloading through Google, uh, the Galaxy Store, not Google Play Store, because the Galaxy Store is optimized for 5G downloads, which is what we're gonna use when we're using the 5G Galaxy S10 next. Uh, but just for comparison's sake, we wanted to use the same store. Uh, the Google Play Store does not necessarily optimize for 5G speeds yet, so we're seeing deferring results. Uh, but we have used apps like Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime Video, and those do support those 5G speeds, so downloads are definitely faster. Uh, and just for a reference, in Chicago on Verizon's LTE, uh, I was able to download PUBG in about a minute and uh, 10 or 12 uh, or 20 seconds, something like that. Uh, and on 5G, I was able to download it in just 23 seconds. So here uh, already we are uh, inching towards the minute mark and we're still not even halfway there on LTE. So I'm expecting around the two minute mark, we're gonna, uh, and again, I apologize for the children screaming. We are in a park, so it's to be expected. But uh, as we get to the two minute mark, I think that's when we're gonna see this download finish, uh, two minutes and maybe a little more than that. And uh, hopefully the S10 5G will bring that number down by a lot. Yeah. 
Okay, so I was wrong. It actually took a little more than three minutes to download PUBG and install and start the installation process. But that's, uh, you know, not the fastest we've seen it. We've definitely seen on LTE downloading it uh, at about uh, a minute and a half or two, actually two minutes. So uh, this area might just be more congested than the rest. All right, now let's start the S10 5G test. It's been a bit difficult. Um, it keeps switching back to 4G LTE and I don't know if that's because the phone is just getting too hot or whether the connection spotty, it really is difficult to tell, but it looks like we're maintaining a 5G connection here. And already you can see within just 20 seconds, we're uh, 500 megabits in, which is way faster than the previous test. And wow, it's racing towards the halfway mark and it's only uh, 35 seconds in. And yep, we've, we're just about to hit that halfway mark, yep. And only 35 seconds, so I'm thinking it's gonna end in around a minute, and I have uh, some flies sitting on my knee. All right, well, edging closer to the end, and it looks like it's gonna definitely do the download a lot faster. And again, this is on the Galaxy Store, so that's optimized for 5G. Uh, hopefully by the time Android Q comes around, or maybe even earlier, the Google Play Store will be better optimized to handle those download speeds. And getting ready to stop, because this is, now let's wait for that installation sign to show up. All right, there we go, one minute and 23 seconds, which is definitely better than the three minutes and 20 plus seconds that we saw on the LTE version. So that's just a small uh, showcase of what 5GE can do to improve the day-to-day -day experience of your life uh, with using your phone, faster download speeds, but that's also just a small selection. Uh, 5G will definitely impact far more industries from smarter cars, smarter cities, and uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. Millimeter Wave 5G is cool and all, especially when you're comparing those download speeds and seeing the difference, but T-Mobile is really focusing on low band and deploying a wide range of slightly faster speeds. Again, not as fast as what we saw today, but more people will be able to access it rather than you know what we saw today where you're only accessing it for like a block, a block and a half, and then you're back on 4G LTE. Of course, a lot of this is also gonna hinge on the T-Mobile and Sprint merger, which will then create the new T-Mobile. If that merger is approved, then T-Mobile's bet is to use its low band as well as Sprint's mid band to have a combination of wider range 5G that also delivers faster speeds. And of course, along with having millimeter wave in dense urban areas, it'll have a robust 5G network in a relatively short amount of time compared to the other carriers. So how much will 5G on T-Mobile cost you? Well, apart from the super high phone cost, this is the Galaxy S10 5G, which is the only phone available on T-Mobile that can connect to its 5G network at the moment. That's $1,300. There's also a monthly payment plan that you can use to lower the cost a bit, but that's still very expensive and we're hoping those phone prices to drop significantly in the coming year or two. Otherwise, T-Mobile's not really charging you anything extra to pay on top of the base $70 unlimited plan that you can get right now. So that's really nice because Verizon is charging you $10 an extra a month on top of the unlimited plan that you have on Verizon's network. So nice to see that T-Mobile's not really bumping the price for access to 5G, though we don't know how long that's gonna last. And if you are actually considering on buying a 5G phone, well, there are six cities that T-Mobile's 5G network is currently available in. More will come as the year goes on. But check out T-Mobile's 5G coverage map on its website to see exactly where you can get 5G in those select cities. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you have any thoughts about 5G or specifically T-Mobile's 5G, leave it in the comments. Otherwise, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and go to digitaltrends.com for more.